So applications of basic fractions, 2.5, our objective now is that we should be able to write and interpret word problems which involve fractions. If we can do that, then this lesson will go very well, and then the assignment will go very well. So keep in mind when we're doing these problems, there's not like a uniform way to do these problems. Just understand, though, that you may have to read and reread the problems two, three, four, five, six times. Who knows? But just expect that to happen. Uh, the other thing that may help you is just drawing pictures on some of the problems. Uh, it depends on how it's worded. I'm not saying that you will ever use it, but some of you may like to see those pictures because you're visual learners, and that's okay too. But for the most part, we're going to be seeing comparisons of parts to holes. Now, parts to holes would be like, uh, like if I looked at a classroom, part of the classroom would be how many boys are in the classroom or even how many girls are in the classroom. That's only part of the class. The whole class would be how many students are in the class because um, that includes both boys and girls. So amounts to totals can be a comparison as well. If you have some kind of amount but you want to compare that to a total, you can do that this way as well. But the numerator is always... A part or an an amount of what is something bigger usually which is the whole or the total now whole here means that it includes all of whatever it is that you're comparing uh, again another way to do it is like you got a total number of pieces of fruit you got a hundred pieces of fruit but 30 of them are oranges that's a 30 to 30 over 100 fraction uh, Again, that's how you'd set it up, and then you do with, with that fraction whatever you need to, whatever they ask us to do. So, to start off, you drive 30 miles to work every day. You want to determine how many miles you have traveled when you have driven one-sixth of the trip and five-sixths of the trip. Okay, so these are both in sixths, which is why this number line is split up into sixths parts. And then we have kind of an equivalent number line down here. The 1 and the 30 are supposed to line up in the zeros as well. Because the whole trip is 30 miles. And the whole trip kind of as a fraction is just 0 to 1. So we'll put both of these on the graph. We'll try to color coordinate them. We'll do 1 sixth here in red. So since it's in sixth, the first mark has to represent 1 sixth. Now, simultaneously, what I can do is just kind of bring this line down to the other number line, and I can see that one-sixth of the trip is also the same as five miles of the trip. Then we can compare five-sixths of the trip, so I look at the fifth mark. So one-sixth, two-sixths, three-sixths, four-sixths, and then that mark right there here is going to be our fifth mark out of six marks or five sixths but again how many miles is that going to be for us well I would just bring this down and again it's not very well uh, lined up there but it had to be the 25 got to be careful just because again this didn't line up very well but uh, on the assignment it will okay so five of the six parts would be 25 miles Okay, now how do I know this? It's because um, you'd have to look at six, right? There's a sixth, 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 and sixth, meaning every five miles is its own sixth. So really you could have done five times five to get the 25 as well. But again, on the number lines that you're going to see on the assignment, you're going to have to be marking these as you go. So one-sixth of the 30-mile trip, we already know that was the five miles. And then the five-sixth of the 30-mile trip is, well, that was the 25 miles. Now, again, you could have used the one-sixth to figure this out. One-sixth is five miles. Five of those five miles would be 25 miles. doesn't matter. We still use the graph even though, well, they didn't line up so well. But we still hopefully understand how to get that. All right, what is one-third of 135? Okay, so we're going to take 135 here, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to split it into thirds, meaning that really what I would do is divide it by 3. So 
I would then do 135 divided by 3. So 3 won't go into 1, but it will go into 13 4 times. 4 times 3 is 12. When I subtract that out, I got 1 left over, drop the 5. 3 goes into 15 5 times. So nothing remaining here. So what is 1 third of 135? I got 45. Now, use your answer to find two of the third, two thirds of the 135. So that means that one third of 135 is 45. But now we're saying we have another third to make two thirds, right? So that would be another 45. So all I'm going to do is add these together. If, I, if you added those fractions, not that we're there yet, but you would have had two thirds. 45 plus 45, we can do the math over here. 5 plus 5 is 10, carry the 1. 1 plus 4 plus 4 is 9. So we end up with 90. Again, it's just a doubling of the 45. You could have multiplied it by 2 and got 90 as well. It doesn't really matter. Um, this is how it wants you to go about this problem. You got 90, you got 45, boom. So this one, what fraction of the cars in the parking lot are blue? And, and in particular, par parking lot with... 26 cars in it, 14 are blue. So we're looking at a part to whole comparison or an amount to total, right? It doesn't really matter how you classify it. Uh, but what I notice here is that blue, the blue cars, which are 14, that's not all of the cars, right? So it's only part of the cars or an amount of the cars, which is 14. That must be our numerator. Then it says, well, there was a total of 26 cars, and we know totals go in the bottom. So 14 over 26 would be the fraction that we're looking for here. Now I should qualify that because I believe on the assignment they may be asking for this to be simplified, and if you can simplify, you should. Yeah, I apologize, I probably boxed that in prematurely. But what I would show then is that uh, these two fractions are both divisible by 2 because of the 4 in the 1's place value and the 6 in the 1's place value. So to simplify this, 14 divided by 2 is 7. 26 divided by 2, which we can use the long division in case you're struggling there. 2 goes into 2 once. 1 times 2 is 2. It's used up. Drop the 6. 2 goes into 6 3 times. 3 times 2 is 6. So nothing remaining. Okay, now that's good news because this would simplify to 7 thirteenths, which is really the simplified ratio of, or fraction, of cars in the parking, parking lot that are blue. So keep in mind, if it says to simplify, this one's required. If it doesn't, then this one would be fine as well. So I'm going to point this out too, but um, the 1426, in my opinion, is the more accurate fraction because if we simplify this, this would indicate that there's seven seven blue cars and 13 total cars, but that's not true. In the problem, there were 26 cars and 14 of them were blue. But again, we're kind of simplifying this as a fraction or as a ratio, however you want to call it, uh, to 7 thirteenths, which is fine. But it can be a little deceptive depending on what you're trying to do with this number. Okay, so pansies are sold on trays of 14 plants. Jen bought nine trays and 11 single plants. Write the number of pansy plants she bought as a mixed number in terms of trays of pans pansies. So first off, we see that um, looks like Jen, she's gonna purchase nine trays. That means she's purchasing nine full trays. Okay, so that's our whole number. We need the fraction. And the top number is going to be uh, how many plants, I guess separately, that she purchased. The denominator is going to be how many plants are in a tray. Well, each tray has 14 plants, so that's my denominator. And looks like she bought 11 of those 14. So one of the trays has only 11 plants out of the 14 slots. So three of them would be empty, and that's okay. But as a mixed number, how many pansies, trays of pansies did Jen buy? 9 and 11 14s. In a given bag of M&Ms, 10 were yellow, 14 were green, 11 were brown, and 17 were red. How many M&Ms were in the bag? We're going to need this because this is going to give us a total amount that was in the bag, or it would be the whole bag. 
So the values that were given, they say up here there were 10 yellows. So we're just going to add these together. It says 14 were green, so we'll put that in there. 11 were brown. I know that's uh, purple, but that's all I got. And then 17 were red. All we got to do is add these together, and we'll have a total amount. So in the ones place value, 0 plus 4 is 4, plus 1 is 5, plus 7 would be 15. So I'd carry 1 over. 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1. There's five ones there, which means that we have five tens. So how many total M&Ms were in the bag? 55 M&Ms. Okay, what fraction were yellow then? Okay, well, we know there were 55 total uh, M&Ms in the bag, and it says up at the top that 10 were yellow. Now, just in case we need to simplify, we know both of those are divisible by 5. which would result in a new fraction. 10 divided by 5 is 2, and 55 divided by 5 is 11. Now, do they want the simplified fraction? I don't know for sure. You're going to have to check on the assignment. It should say if it wants the simplified fraction or if it's okay with uh, the regular fraction. Next up, we're going to do greens. So there's going to be a 55 denominator right there. And up the top, we know that there was 14 greens. Now, 14 and 55, 14 is divisible by 2 and 7, but 55 is not, so that fraction we get to keep the same. The browns, again, there's 55 total M&Ms in the bag, and we said that there was 11 uh, of the browns. So this will give us a new fraction because 11 and 55 are both divisible by 11. Both multiples of 11. 11 divided by 11 is 1, and 55 divided by 11 would be 5. So a fifth of the bag are brown M&Ms. And then finally, we've come to red. Well, there's still 55 M&Ms in the bag, but only 17 of them were red. And yeah, uh, 17 is prime, and 55 is not a multiple of 17, so that one is simplified as well. Okay? So that gives us these four answers, we had, well, I guess five, right? We had the 55 M&Ms, two 11s were yellow, 14 55ths were green, one fifth were brown, and 17 55ths were red. So you are going to swim 24 laps. You have completed seven laps. What fractions of laps have you completed? Well, let's figure out this completed stuff you know you're going to do 24 laps. That's what it said up here at the top. This specifically is looking for completed, and it said you completed 7 laps. So that's 7 out of 24. And last thing I would do is to see if this is simplified, but uh, it can't. Uh, 24 is divisible by 3, but 7 is not. 24 is divisible by 4, 8, and 6, but it's never divisible by 7. So this is as simplified as we can make it. Now it says what fraction of your swim remains? Well... You know you got to do 24 laps. Right now you've completed 7, so to figure out how many remain, we just need to subtract that out. This will tell us how many laps remain, not the fraction, but at least how many laps. I'll make that 14. 14 minus 7 is 7, then we'll drop the 1. So remaining laps, you've got 17 laps out of the 24. So if that answers both questions, that's all we need. Boom, we're done. And there's our objective. Again, I can write and interpret word problems involving fractions. Sometimes we're just making the fractions. Sometimes we had to do some simplification. No operations, and that's okay. We'll get to those.